the gallop. Oh! Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier, the saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire, and the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Eighty-three men for duty. Hardy and Simmons in the hospital. Five men on leave, Captain. All right, Corporal Mercer. Just leave the morning report on the desk. Yes, sir. One of the three new men has transferred out here from Fort Larn. I've been assigned a second platoon, sir. Come in. Captain Quince, the supply train's on its way in. Oh, good. <sighs> Lieutenant Seibert's is sending the train on to the quartermaster's depot, but he said he'd be right here. All right, thanks, Jenkins. Supply train in from the railroad at Cheyenne, Captain. All stores is ordered. Anything to report, Mr. Seibert? Cracked hub, two mules lame, one destroyed, otherwise routine, sir. Your command have a good time in Cheyenne? I think they did. I noticed a few skin knuckles. Any complaints from the civilian authorities? No, sir. <laughs> All right, Seibert. Sign out to the quartermaster. Water and turn your stock out in the South Range. Dismiss your men. They're relieved from further duty until... What's that buggy doing in your train? Oh, I was going to tell you, tell you about that, sir. We uh, had a passenger, a lady. Lady? A Mrs. Wentner. She's the widow of an officer who was stationed here. Oh, that must have been Captain Wentner. Said he was killed by a Cheyenne. Oh, that's right. Three, four years ago, up in Lance Creek. His whole command was wiped out. That was before my time. I wonder what she's doing here. She didn't tell you? No, sir. Handsome woman. <laughs> I take it you enjoyed your trip then, Mr. Seibert? Not bad, sir. May I give you a hand, ma'am? Thank you. Ms. Wintner, I'm Captain Quince. Welcome to Fort Laramie. How do you do, Captain? Are you the post commandant? No, ma'am. That would be Major Daggett. We didn't expect you, Mrs. Wentner. Perhaps your letter was delayed. There was no letter. I told no one I was coming. If we had, we might have arranged a more fit and reception and better transportation. This was quite satisfactory. I rented the horse and buggy in Cheyenne, and the lieutenant furnished me a driver. You were very considerate, Lieutenant Seibertz. Thank you, Mrs. Wentner. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll get back to the train. Of course. Thank you, Lieutenant. Pleasure, ma'am. If you'll come with me, Mrs. Wentner, I'll take you in to meet Major Daggett. All right, Captain. Thank you. Uh, take care of the horse and buggy, Jenkins. Yes, sir. Did you know my husband, Captain Quince? Why, yes. Out here? That's right. I don't remember him mentioning you in his letters, but it seems to me there was a Quince in his class at West Point. Oh, I wasn't at the point, Mrs. Wentner. I was commissioned in the field at Shenandoah. <laughs> Up from the ranks. Oh, I see. Uh, here we are. Come in. Oh, Major Daggett, this is Mrs. Wentner. Just came in with a supply train. Oh, this is a pleasure, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Wentner? That's right, Major. I'm Philip Wentner's widow. Oh, yes. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I didn't know your husband myself, Mrs. Wentner, but I've been assured that his death was a great loss to the Army. Even more tragic for yourself, of course. It was a horrible thing. And even worse, a terrible, unnecessary thing. 
We could have been safe in Washington. I arranged it all with the president himself. I see. I could never understand why Philip refused it, but he was a stubborn man. Well, he was very popular here, I understand. Isn't that right, Captain Quince? He was a good field officer, Miss Wintner. Perhaps he... He wouldn't have been happy at some desk in Washington. It might have been better for him to be a little unhappy and alive today, mightn't it, Captain? That's hard to say, ma'am. Well, uh, at any rate, we're happy to have you here, Mrs. Wintner. Sorry we weren't prepared, but I'm sure Mrs. Daggett will be able to arrange things comfortably. You'll stay with my wife and me, of course. Thank you, Major. And perhaps we can use your visit as an excuse to liven things up around here. We've had very few social activities. Might even arrange a reception or something of the sort. Major Daggett, I'm not here for social reasons. Well, what I meant was... Major Daggett, I came to get my husband's body. Mrs. Wintner, your husband's not buried here uh, at the fort. I know that. But you see, I want him recovered and taken back east. I've arranged that he will be buried with full military honors in Arlington Cemetery. But his grave is a hundred miles from here, up on Lance Creek, where he was killed. I've already come 2,000 miles. Another hundred doesn't matter. I don't think you understand. That's Indian territory. Cheyenne and Sioux hunting ground. Treaty territory. Aside from the very real danger, my orders strictly forbid any white person to enter that region, including my own troopers. Perhaps this letter will clear your mind. You will see it signed by the Secretary of War himself. Yes, I see. So, Major Daggett, I shall want to leave for Lance Creek as soon as possible. And you expect me to send you there with a troop escort, of course? The letter says every assistance possible. It also says within the scope of my orders and with due consideration for your safety. I'm not worried about my safety, Major Daggett. But I am. But in a case like this... There are no exceptions mentioned, Mrs. Wintner. What do I care about a treaty with those savages who murdered my husband? The treaty was made, ma'am, to prevent other men from dying the way your husband did. Captain Quince, I'm beginning to understand why these Indian troubles go on and on. I've wondered about that. Wondered why you didn't just wipe them out. I think you're afraid of them. It's not that easy. The Indians are people, too. They have rights. I'm not interested in their rights, Captain Quince. And I'm not interested in your orders, Major Daggett. Am I to understand that you refuse to allow me to go to Lance Creek? That's correct. I can't risk your life, nor the lives of my men. And I won't risk a general Indian war. Very well. Captain Quince, would you be good enough to show me to my quarters? Of course, ma'am. Very impressive. The parade ground, the drilling. Yes, it is, Miss Wintner. Until you remember that in spite of all the military show, you're still afraid to face the Indians. Have you completed your tour of inspection? Yes. Lieutenant Seibert's has shown me everything, I think. It's all very interesting. Seeing the place that Philip called home. There's one thing I'd like explained, however. What's that, ma'am? What could possibly have held him here? What holds you, Captain Quince? 
I'm afraid I can't explain it to you, Mrs. Wintner. I'm sure you couldn't. May I escort you to your quarters? Thank you. I've noticed several men dressed in buckskins lounging about the store, the sutlers, you call it. Who are they? Civilian scouts. It's Charlie Reynolds, Will Granby, Pete Hazen. It was one of them, wasn't it, who found my husband up on Lance Creek? Yes, ma'am. Pete Hazen. He led the burial detail back. I must talk to him sometime. He's under the Major's orders too, ma'am. I meant Captain Quince. He might be able to tell me things about my husband. Things a wife would like to know. Of course, ma'am. You don't like me, do you, Captain? I don't know you well enough to like or dislike you, Mrs. Wintner. But it seems plain to me that you intend to disregard every consideration to get to Lance Creek. If you'll excuse me. Come in. Captain Gwynn's reporting, sir. Oh, Lee. I've just been thinking, uh, Caldwell's due for a leave. Who can we send out to the Clearwater Patrol as replacement? Is Seibert's too green? No, no, he'll do. He's come along fast. All right, good. Major. Major, what about Mrs. Wintner? Well, what about her? I think she's going to make trouble. I don't think she can. I've kept a check of the telegraph office and the mail. I think she's accepting the inevitable. I don't. I think she's determined to go to Lance Creek, one way or another. How can she, if I won't let her? I don't know, but I think you'd better warn the civilian scouts, especially Pete Hazen. Oh, he wouldn't be that much of a fool. I wouldn't think so either. But with her, anything can happen. I believe that. She's quite a woman. Oh, by the way, the evening social's all set up for Saturday night. Nettie's sending out the invitations today. Having a small dinner first. Uh, you're supposed to come. Oh? As Mrs. Wentner's escort. Why me? Well, you're an inmate of old Bedlam. You're eligible. There are other bachelor officers living there, cybers. The youngsters. She's more your age. Now, don't fight it, Lee. Nettie's mind's made up. Only one thing I don't like about your wife, Major. She's a matchmaker. <laughs> yeah, I know. She can't help herself. Hates to see an unmarried officer. Especially one as old as you. And after all, Mrs. Wentner is a widow and mighty attractive. You could do worse. Major, some women are army, some aren't. When Phil Wentner came out to Laramie, he came alone. She seems to fit in fine now. Maybe she's changed. Uh, women like that don't change. Just the same you'll escort her Saturday night. You better present your compliments to her tomorrow afternoon. That in order, sir? Tomorrow afternoon, Lee. White gloves. Oh, Captain Quince. Afternoon, Mrs. Daggett. I'd, uh like to present my compliments to Mrs. Wentner? Why, yes, of course, Captain. Only, well... What is it, Miss Daggett? Well, it's very strange. But last night, Carolyn asked not to be disturbed this morning. Said she wanted to sleep late. But when she didn't come out, even for luncheon, I got worried. So a few minutes ago, I knocked and looked in her room. She's not there, Captain. She didn't sleep in her bed last night. Captain... Where are you going? To the settlers, Miss Daggett. You better tell the Major. Lee, what do you make of it? Oh, it's very simple, Major. Mrs. Wentner was last seen last night. Pete Hazen left sometime before dawn with two loaded pack mules, two horses, one rig side saddle. He left this at the settlers for you with a $20 gold piece. Hmm? guess it's his resignation. Didn't want to get arrested for disobeying orders. Yeah, you're right. They're on their way to Lance Creek. 
They got at least 11 hours start. They've got to be stopped. Yeah, if they're still alive. How long will it take you to get B Company ready? Too long. Besides, a full company up there will mean war. You think you can get a small detachment through, five or six men? I can try. And if we're caught, we might be able to talk our way out of it. Well, they can't be moving very fast. I'd say I could catch them about halfway. All right, Lee. Take the men you want and an extra amount for each. Rations for four days and 200 rounds of ammunition. 50 rounds will be enough, Major. If we have to fight it all, it won't matter how much ammunition we have. I've lost the tracks, Captain. There. There, over there, Gorse. Oh, yeah, that's it. I'd never have believed it, Captain. Two days from the fort almost to Lance Creek, and they're still ahead of us. I underestimated that woman. She's tougher than I thought. She sure must be. Captain. Yep. And they've seen us. They've stopped. Ho! Miss Wintner? How do you do, Captain? She gave me an awful lot of money, Captain. More than I'd ever seen in one piece. Yeah, that's what I figured. You're not going to stop me now, Captain. Mr. Hazen says the graves are just over that ridge there. Miss Wintner, we're going to turn around right here and head back to the fort as fast as we can make it. Do you have any idea of the danger? Captain... Up there on the hill. Yeah, I see. Right in circle, signaling. Why, that's an Indian. It is, Mrs. Wintner. Oh. Captain, what are you going to do? Might as well go on up to Lance Creek. Do what the lady came to do. This is it. Right over there. This one. Just this? That's it. You sure? His insignia will be inside the rock. It's so quiet here. So peaceful. Right now it is. Get a spade, Jenkins. Yes, sir. Miss Wintner, you sure you want to go through with this? What do you mean, Captain? Why, it wasn't time for a proper burial. I see. Did they do anything to him? Cheyenne always do. You may proceed. All right, Jenkins. Miss Wintner, why don't you wait over there? Captain Quince, I'm not a schoolgirl. I came this far. I can stand to watch. All right. Pete. Pete, who was this? That there was Sergeant Tackerberry, Captain. One with a red mustache, Captain. And a laugh you could hear clean across the river. Yeah, I remember. And that one there was Lieutenant Williams. Yeah. Captain, is that the Lieutenant Williams my husband used to speak about in his letters? I expect so. They were friends. All these men were his friends. Men who lived with him, fought with him, died with him. He... He wasn't alone, Miss Wintner. They're all buried here where they fell. I see. Mr. Jenkins. Ma'am? Stop digging for a moment. Captain, you don't want me to do this. Why? I... I... 
I don't think your husband would care about being buried in Arlington Cemetery. Why? Tell me, Captain Quince. You knew him? What was he like out here? Like any other man, not very different. But he liked it. Like the country, the men, like the job. He was willing to die here if necessary. Are you trying to say that he came here to get away? That he didn't want to go back home? That he didn't care about me? He never talked about you, Miss Wentner. Captain, all I want to do is take him back. Back to a hero's grave. He's in a hero's grave. Nothing you or I can do will add to that. You think I'm a selfish woman. I was thinking only of myself. Of my pride. Only you can answer that, Miss Winter. On the ridge, Captain. <laughs> yeah, they didn't waste any time. Must have been a hunting party close. They're coming down. Oh, it must be 30 at least. Doesn't give us much chance, Captain. Oh. It's important to keep calm, Miss Wintner. Very important right now. What have I done? Bringing you men here to this. We may be able to get out of it yet. Talbot, keep those horses under control. When they get a whiff of those Indian ponies. Mrs. Wentner, what are you doing? If anything's going to happen, I want his grave just the way it was. Jenkins, help her. Yes, sir. Sergeant Gorse. Yes, sir. Watch her. Stay right behind her. If the Indians attack you, you know what to do. Yes, sir. Don't miss. I won't. What do you think, Hazen? Can't tell yet. They're still bunched. Ain't hurrying. But they ain't gonna be friendly. No, we're uninvited guests. Can't expect much. They're down and stringing out. And stopping. Right across the only way out. Well, they won't come any closer to the graves. Cheyenne custom, respect for the dead. Even the dead they killed. We're safe as long as we stay right here. How long can we stay, Pete? Captain, we might try cutting up over the ridge. Oh, the minute we break and run, we're finished. Uh, I'll go out to him. Might as well all go, Captain. There'll be no defending ourselves anyway. All right. Ms. Wentner? Looks all right now, doesn't it, Captain? Yes, it does. Well, ma'am? Don't worry, I'll be fine. Good. Now, everybody will move slowly forward, leading your horses. Move easily. Don't show any fear or excitement. It's Little Bear, Captain. At least he can talk some. Won't have to use sign. That's right, Captain. I'll do the talking, Hazen. Sure. Greetings, true little bear. White soldier, give promise. Stay off Cheyenne hunting ground. Why you come? We come in peace, not war. We don't want trouble with the Cheyenne. They don't want trouble with us. Treaty say you stay out. I know that... I made them come. The white lady came to find the grave of her husband. A warrior killed in battle here. She wants to take his body back to his home, to Washington. What warrior? The little captain. The captain with the yellow hair. Yeah. That one great warrior. Captain, these are the Indians. That's right, ma'am. Little Bear, the Cheyenne had great warriors killed here, too. But the Cheyenne could take their dead away to their proper burial place. Will Little Bear allow us to take this warrior with us and leave the hunting ground in peace? Better leave spirit of dead in peace. In Washington, there is a place to bury great warriors with much honor. She will take him there. Better leave dead buried. All right, Captain. We'll leave him. He's right. I know that now. Philip is better off here, in his hero's grave. All right, ma'am. Will 
Little Bear allow us to leave the hunting grounds in peace? Go. Thank you, Little Bear. All right. Everybody mount up. Easy. We'll move out now, before he changes his mind. Sergeant Gorse, how does it look behind? They're turning away. I figure it's all right. And we'll keep the horses at walk just the same for a while. Yes, sir. Captain. Thank you. What for, Mrs. Wentner? It was probably your presence that saved us and what you said. No. I mean, for teaching me a lesson. Uh, not me, Ms. Wentner. Let's say this country out here. It can teach you a lot of lessons. Maybe... Maybe I was wrong about something, too. What? No, oh, just something I said about people not changing. Just... Just something I said. You know, we keep moving. We might be able to make the Daggett Social Saturday night. Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by John Dunkel, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Jack Moyles, Harry Bartell, Jack Crucian, Helen Klebe, Joseph Cranston, and James Nusser. Company tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Half a loaf may be better than none at all when you're bargaining for bread, but every Sunday, the Edgar Bergen Show calls for a happier arrangement than that. For each half of the Edgar Bergen Show seems somehow to be better than the other half. And with so much fun in store, there's no need for compromise. Enjoy all of the lighthearted antics of Edgar Bergen, Charlie McCarthy, Jack Kirkwood, Effie Klinker, Mortimer Snurd, Gary Crosby, Carol Richards, and the famous Edgar Bergen End Table Discussion Group. They'll all be with you again over most of these same stations every Sunday night. <laughs>